Okay, welcome. So what I want to do is show you how to graph y equals negative x minus 7 squared plus 2. And we're going to do this in vertex form. So when doing this, the main important thing in vertex form is to make sure we can understand what the a, h, and k are going to be and understand those transformations. So in this case, I have a equals negative 1. Uh, my x, or my h, equals <clears throat> 7. And my k equals 2. So remember, a is going to tell us if we're going to have any dilations, which in this case, since my a is equal to 1, I'm not going to dilate my graph at all. However, it is negative, so therefore the graph is going to be reflected over the x-axis. And when I talk about the graph, I'm talking about the parent function. This parent function is now going to be reflected over my x-axis. h is going to be positive 7, because remember, it's x opposite of h. So it's going to be positive 7. That means I'm going to shift my graph 7 units to the right. And then k is going to be my. Um, uh, my shift up vertically, and that's going to sense that's positive. That means I'm going to shift my graph two units up. So let's go and take a look at this, and let's uh, see what it's going to look like. All right. So the easiest thing I think to do is determine what the vertex is. And when you have a vertex, a lot of times what I'm calling this vertex form is because we can easily identify the vertex. And the vertex is simply just h comma k when your quadratic is in this format. So we can say our vertex is going to be 7 comma 2. Done. Then we can go ahead and take a look at, uh, so that's my vertex. That's my vertex, axis of symmetry. So we're now looking at the axis of symmetry. Um, remember, the axis of symmetry is going to be the vertical line that my graph is symmetrical about. So my parent graph, we know the axis of symmetry is x equals 0. So if I shift my graph 7 units to the right, now that's going to be my axis of symmetry. So I'm going to shift this over 7 units, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And that's now going to be my new axis of symmetry. However, my graph is also now being shifted down 2 units. So actually, our axis of symmetry is x equals 7. OK, so now our vertex we said was over 7 and then up 2. All right. Now we did notice that the graph is now being shifted uh, two units, um, now it's being shifted over my x-axis. So therefore, what we like to call our m behavior is going to be going down. Now it's still going to have, there's no dilation. So therefore, the relationship of the points from the vertex is going to be over 1, up 1. But now, instead of going up, we're going to go down. So it's going to be over 1, down 1. So from my vertex, I'll go over 1, down 1. And then over 1, down 1. And then I'll go over 2, down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Over 2, down 4 over 2, down 4. Over 2, down 4. All right, so now what you can see is my graph, um, when we're looking at the x and y intercepts, I'll show you how to find the y intercepts and x intercepts algebraically. Um, but what we can say right now is we're just going to have a y intercept. Um, it looks like my y intercept is going to be a pretty uh, large number um, in this case. but so. We'll kind of save that a little bit for later. Um, however, let's just kind of look at this graph and look at our x-intercept and where that's going to be. And you can see it doesn't cross at an even integer. So I can say my x-intercepts, that's where the graph crosses the x-axis. You can see it crosses the x-axis at two points. Now, we'll, we will learn how to find these exact values. But for right now, let's just kind of estimate. We can see that it's going to be between 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5 and 6, so you could say 5 less than x, which is less than 6. And then we could also say it's between 6, 7, 8, 8, 9. So you could say 8 is less than x, which is less than 9. Now again, I'm just estimating. We will learn. I will show you how to algebraically find the x-intercept and also the y-intercept when it's not apparent just by looking at a graph. But that's how you graph using your vertex form. Thanks.